Good morning, Kingswood, and Happy New Year. This week we have our usual segments plus a brand new one. We have quite the show for you this week, so grab some popcorn if you want to and enjoy the show. Good morning, Kingswood. I'm Elliot Geisler, and well, actually, it's just going to be me this morning. We're a little short staffed, so you'll have to excuse us, but that won't stop us. Let's get right into the news. The State of Hope Relief Fund collected $721 in total for the tornado victims in Kentucky and beyond. Thanks to the Current Issues class, NHS, and Peer Outreach for taking the lead on this event. And now, strap in everyone. Here is our gaming segment with Damon Thurber. Howdy folks, you know what time it is. I'm Damon Thurber and this is Game of the Week. This week's game is an indie hit I recently fell in love with after buying it from a Steam sale and that game, as you can probably tell from the fact that I'm wearing a hat, is called A Hat in Time. Released way back in 2017, the game follows a cheerful alien girl named... Well, she doesn't exactly have a name per se, but early on in the game, somebody calls her Hat Kid and that name just seemed to stick with the player base so I'll be going with that. Anyway, the game follows Hat Kid on her quest to reclaim all of the time pieces she lost after her spaceship was broken into by a particularly angry member of the Mafia Town Mafia. Time pieces are fuel for her ship, and without them, she's as good as stranded, so she's off to the surface to get them back. During her adventures, She'll have run-ins with a number of unique and peculiar individuals, including, but not limited to, the Mafia. These burly blockheads are, co are the cooking-obsessed inhabitants of the aptly named Mafia Town. While, yes, they do like to cook, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good at it. As described by a cat inhabiting their HQ, somebody would likely die if they ate the Mafia's cooking. Another interesting character she'll encounter in Mafia Town is the appropriately named Mustache Girl. She's infatuated with the idea of wiping out the Mafia at all costs and asks for your help in doing so. If you can look past the fact that this is a female child with a fully grown mustache, she's quite the character and definitely has no ulterior motives whatsoever and has a 0% likelihood of betraying you later down the line? Absolutely not. Where did you get that idea from? Moving out of Mafia Town, Hat Kid will later find herself at Dead Bird Studios, home of the esteemed and accomplished conductor and the funky yet ultimately unsuccessful DJ Grooves. The two of them are competing for the annual Bird Movie Award, and it's up to Hat Kid and her work as the star of their films to decide who takes home the gold. The conductor, as he's done many, many times in the past, is producing a train heist western flick entitled Murder on the Owl Express, in which one of the express owls is murdered, and it's up to Hat Kid to gather evidence and track down the culprit, all while avoiding the eye of the strange new band of crows that mysteriously seem to have shown up on board recently. They'll ask you a ton of personal questions that they definitely will not be using for anything malicious later on. Absolutely not. Meanwhile, DJ Grooves, after having you manually touch up a passport photo that didn't quite come out right, is recording a film called The Big Parade, in which Hat Kid acts as the ringleader for, well, a big parade. This rivalry isn't just a plot point. Your choice of which director to help out will actually change the outcome and present you with a different ending to your adventures through the studio. In the game's third chapter, Hat Kid ventures into the dark, unsettling depths of the Subcon Forest, where she is promptly captured by a merciless god of torment known as the Snatcher. The Snatcher steals her soul, as one does, and forces her to sign off on a contract that requires her to do various tasks for him. 
even once you finish your, contra your contracts and defeat him. However, your work isn't done. If you have installed a certain DLC pack, Snatcher will move in on your ship, and talking to him will lead him to offer up the greatest challenges you're likely to face at any point in the game. Welcome to the Death Wish contract. These contracts take previous levels you've played and add new, minor tweaks to them that, to make them excessively difficult. For example, the first Death Wish you can take on is set in Mafia Town. In this contract, aptly titled Beat the Heat, the floor is lava. This was a scenario used in a previous level named Heating Up Mafia Town, in which you had to explore the town to shut off various faucets that were spewing the stuff. But this time, it's different. This time, Hat Kid can't take the heat, and will actually begin burning up if you don't get to water fast enough. Make no mistake, these challenges are absolutely brutal, and are only really advisable for the best of the best. So only take them on if you're really confident in your abilities. This game is phenomenal. The Metroidvania-like power creep from unlocking various new hats with new abilities and being able to go back to previous levels to use them to find new secrets is incredibly satisfying, as each time you unlock a new hat, it feels like opening a thousand locked doors. The soundtrack is amazing as well, going for a somewhat bouncy, orchestrated feel with occasional high-pitched, almost sci-fi-like notes to really emphasize hat kids from another world. The controls are snappy and satisfying, and the amount of movement options Hat Kid has at her disposal make platforming an absolute joy, especially when you manage to pull off, like you might have just seen, a complex maneuver or manage to just barely save yourself from a fall with some quick moves. Graphically, this game is gorgeous. It goes for a very cartoony art style, almost harkening back to the days of the GameCube, with the way that the characters, with the way that the characters' faces look really bringing to mind The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker which is funny considering that in some of the game's earliest prototypes, the resemblance was even stronger. Look it up if you're curious. Everything is vibrant and colorful, and it's really a treat for the eye. And don't even get me started on the game's modding support. The kinds of things the community has made for this game are absolutely ridiculous, and way more than I have time to get into in this segment. If any of this sounds interesting to you, you have got to check this game out. Seriously, it is an absolute blast from start to finish. You can get it on Steam, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Anywho, that'll do it for me, Kingswood. I'm Damon Thurber, this has been Game of the Week, and hats off to you. I'll see you next week. Well, thank you for that, Damon. That game looked quite interesting. Tonight, boys and girls varsity basketball will have games against Kennett from 4 to 7.30. The boys will be at home, and the girls will be at Kennett. Good luck, everyone. And now, speaking of that, we're going to sports with me. Good morning and welcome back, Kingswood. I'm still your host, Elliot Giesler, and let's start in on the sports. The NFL playoff race is beginning to wind down. Many of the spots have been clinched already. The AFC North has been taken by the Bengals. The AFC West has been taken by the Chiefs. The Titans have the AFC South. The Cowboys have the NFC East. The Packers in the NFC North. And the Buccaneers in the NFC South. The Rams, Cardinals, Eagles, Bills, and Patriots have also clinched their spots, but the Bills are still looking to lock up their division with a win next week, and the Rams and Cardinals are in their whole own thing. Uh, the NFC still has one wild card spot left, uh, and it's currently held by the 49ers. However, there are a few teams that could get it. The AFC has two spots left, with the Chargers, Raiders, and the Colts currently vying for them, with the Steelers also in there, but they're going to need a little bit more luck. Uh, moving to the individual games, the Geesler MVP of the week is Jamar Chase of the Bengals. Chase had 11 catches for 266 yards and three touchdowns in the Bengals' 34-31 upset win over the Chiefs. As a side note for that game, uh, Chase's 266 yards was more receiving yards than Patrick Mahomes had passing yards, which is just absolutely crazy considering, honestly, how good Mahomes is. Moving to the next game, the Buccaneers also came back to win against the Jets and won it on this Cyril Grayson touchdown. 
It was a nice catch, but it's a little concerning that they needed a 93-yard drive to win against the Jets, but I'll give them a pass because of Antonio Brown's meltdown on the sideline. If the league is as smart as I think they are, he should be done with football. I mean, no amount of talent is worth the emotional roller coaster that he has brought to every team he's been on. The College Football National Championship is set. The two contestants will be Alabama and Georgia. Was anybody outside of these two states rooting for this outcome? I mean, they deserve the right to be there, don't get me wrong. They are probably the two best teams in the country. But you can't tell me that this is captivating at all from a narrative standpoint. I mean, I'll watch because it's probably going to be a good game, but I mean, I don't think the same team showing up every year in the national championship is very good for the sport. And we already had this game a month ago, and it was a blowout, I might add. I mean, it'll probably be different this time, but I'd rather watch another team at least have a chance to do something than watch these two basically carbon copies of each other play the same game that we see a thousand times every year when SEC teams go against each other. Okay, I'll stop complaining now. All right, so I'm going to be honest. I stopped talking about the Celtics, and they started doing a little better, so I'm just going to keep doing that. Sorry to anyone who wanted to hear about basketball, but my hands are kind of tied here. Um, yeah, but that's going to do it for me, Kingswood. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week, and now back to the news. Hi, I'm Scott Geisler, and this is LRTC Multimedia. If you have ever wanted to learn how to produce your own television shows, both live and in the studio and out in the field, or write and produce your own film, then multimedia might be the right fit for you. In semester one, you'll be the producer of your very own television news program in our TV studio production class. Our news programs, Nightwatch, MATV, Wolf Howl, and Tiger Strike, offer the latest on what is happening in each of our member schools. Then, in the second half of the year, we get out of the studio and into the field to write scripts, shoot, edit, and publish our very own movies. Students have access to some amazing gear, including 4K cameras, motorized sliders, and the best in microphone technology. Level 2 offers you the opportunity to write your own course of study. Whether it be in the TV studio or out in the field shooting, you write your curriculum. Many students produce their own weekly shows, while our film students produce movies to enter into the New Hampshire High School Short Film Festival, while others choose to work with Wolfboro Community Television to help produce productions of local events. Multimedia is a great opportunity for any student who is looking for a creative outlet while building practical skills for tomorrow's working world. So sign up for Multimedia and let's have some serious fun. Happy New Year, Kingswood! It's officially 2022, and although it is a new year, these celebs just keep winding up in the same old drama that definitely is for my benefit. Keep it up, guys. I'm sure you've already heard this unfortunate news, but on December 31st, hours before the ball dropped, Betty White peacefully passed away at the age of 99. She was best known for her outstanding performances in Golden Girls, The Proposal, and as Grammy Norma in The Lorax. Rest in peace to her beautiful soul. During the Harry Potter reunion, the producers decided to reminisce with the cast and go through photos of the actors and actresses from when they were young. It didn't take Twitter very long to realize that one of the photos used wasn't Emma Watson. It was Emma Roberts. The producers definitely just went to Google, probably, and searched Emma as a child and just took the first thing to pop up. Maybe Emma Stone is in that photo collage, too. If you were a complete wreck because Keeping Up with the Kardashians came to an end, although there were 20 seasons of the show, then boy are you in for a treat. Hulu is going to be releasing a new show titled The Kardashians. Kris Jenner says, this is the next chapter in the new show. You'll see us evolving as a family. Fans want us to be who we are and since moment one they've been emotionally invested in our show just like we are. The fans will love seeing us continue the journey. I can't say much about what's coming, but spoiler, we're going to look fabulous and everyone's going to watch. So pretty much it's just like the last show. Nice. Good one. 
Jeopardy's winner, Amy Schneider, has just broken the record for most consecutive wins by a woman by winning the show for the 21st time, beating Julia Collins' 20 wins. Amy has also become the woman with the most all-time earnings at a whopping $806,000. Netflix has released their up-and-coming movies, and here's what you can expect as of January 1st. The original Annie interview with a vampire, Paranormal Activity, the classic Stand By Me, and one of my all-time favorites, The Wedding Singer. For the week's movie, I will be reviewing Midsummer, produced by the same man who created Hereditary, Ari Aster. Viewer discretion could never be more advised when it comes to this movie, but it's definitely a film I will never forget. This story is about a woman named Danny whose sister takes her own life. So to get away from the tragedy, she embarks on a journey with her boyfriend and his friends to Sweden so they can experience the Midsummer ceremonies. What they don't know is what sinister and cult-like activities are awaiting them, which will definitely make you feel uneasy or completely terrified like me. I'm not a fan of gore, so I was hiding behind a pillow nearly the whole time, but I still really like the eerie feeling of the psychological horror. You can watch this movie on Showtime and Amazon Prime. Also, this movie is rated R, so I would proceed with caution and maybe check IMDb's parent guide before watching, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. And do not say I didn't warn you. Anyways, that's it for me, Kingswood. Once again, I'm Lauren Gilbert, and I'm signing out. Well, thank you for that, Lauren. Kingswood Theatre is proud to present The Other Room by Adrian Blade. This one-act drama will be presented in the Kingswood Arts Center on Janu January 27th and 28th at 7 p.m. Admission is free. This show is produced in partnership with the Lakes Region Technology Center Stagecraft Program and the Kingswood Theatre Performance Class. Come join us for an evening of great entertainment. For more information, visit kingswoodtheatre.com. And now, we're going to Bobby with music. Hello Kingswood and welcome back to Music Corner. I'm your host, Bobby Lebrec. 2021 was a great year for music and I enjoyed a lot of releases during that year, so keep up the good work my fellow musicians. So let's not waste any time and get on to this artist of the week. This week I'm gonna, I was going to review Billie Eilish, but I heard from a little bird that the same person who stormed to my show and reviewed Chase Atlantic decided to have me review this one artist that I've never heard of before until now. This week we'll be discussing the musical group Emotional Oranges. Emotional Oranges is an American R&B pop group formed in 2017 and they're from Los Angeles, California. They have a total of three albums, Juicebox Volume 1, Juicebox Volume 2, and the juice box, even though they could have called it juice box volume three, but that's just my perspective. I could tell this band really enjoys juice boxes. All of their albums consist of eight tracks and they, re they recently released the juice box, AKA juice box volume three, released last year. I would like to share a favorite song of mine from them. Mind you, that as I was writing this, I just heard the song for the first time today. My thoughts on it were mild, but this song stood out to me a lot. Here's a song, No Words, featuring Yendre, if I'm about to answer I don't know, there's a backwards end and stuff, but play this one. Take time when I hurt, give space what I learn, show face is your turn, now for you I got no words. Take time when I hurt, give space what I learn, show face is your turn, now for you I got no words. Very R&B, if I do say so myself. Also, fun fact, the group released its first single, Motion, on May 4th, 2018 on SoundCloud and was used on the theme song of RuPaul's Drag Race. Very interesting. Anyways, I think that covers up this artist, so thank you guys for watching this week's episode. Now back to Devin and that strange kid in the studio. Thank you for that, Bobby. I'll be sure to check him out. Here's what's for lunch next week. Monday, we'll have a Cuban sub or a hot dog. Uh, Tuesday, we'll have chicken and waffles. Wednesday, we'll have a baked potato bar. Thursday, we'll have toasted cheese. And Friday will be WG pizza. Seems pretty good, if you ask me. And now, we'll be going to our brand new segment, Weather with Devin Mugford.
Howdy, folks. I am your weather reporter, Devin Mugford. Now, here's your weather report for the week. Friday, there is a chance of snow, 90% actually, with a high of 28 and a low of 11. Saturday, it is going to be sunny, clear outside, with a high of 25 and a low of 12. And then Sunday, we go back into the terrible weather with a high of 34 and a low of 26, with 43% chance of snow. Now, if you want to take a look at the weather around the map, here it is. It's going to be roughly around high 30 or, or low 30s to high 20s. And in our lakes region ourselves, it's going to be around 30 degrees itself. Now, that's pretty cold. I am your weather reporter, Devin Mugford. And just remember this, it is never too cold to wear shorts. Thank you for that, Devin. I feel very well informed. And now we'll be heading to Dad Jokes with Jaden Bronk and guest star Damon Thurber. Hey, gang. <laughs> Welcome to Dad Jokes. On today's gorgeous and beautiful episode, we have my best friend, Damon Thurber. How are you doing today, Damon? Um, I want to go home. Ah, well... All right, well, I'm going to tell you some dad jokes. I hope that will make you feel better. All right? I can guarantee you it will not. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you some jokes that you're absolutely going to love. So how do you make the number one disappeared? Uh, I don't know. You just add the word, the letter G before one, and it's gone. I spent over... $80 on a belt that didn't fit. My wife told me it was a huge waste. You okay, man? I've never been less okay in my life. Wow. On New Year's Day, I tell my wife, ah, 2021. I remember as if it was yesterday. You do not know how many times I have heard that exact joke told by every single person on the face of the planet. Huh. All right, I went to a psychic and I knocked on her front door and she, she yelled, Who is it? So I left. Okay, I'll give you that one. <laughs> All right. What did 50 Cent when he got... Eh. What did 50 Cent do when he got hungry? I don't know. 58. I can't believe there are 353 days until next Christmas, and people already have their decorations already up. Isn't that crazy? All right, next joke. I found a coin in the street the other day, and it had uh, teeth marks all over it. It was Bitcoin. My wife asked me to put up uh, put ketchup on the shopping list. Now, I can't read it. You all right, bro? I can feel every synapse in my brain collapsing in on itself. <laughs> all right. All right, the last one is my personal joke. Thank God. Guess what? What? That's what? That's it for today's dad jokes. Uh, now we're going to go back to the anchors. We'll see you next week. Thank you for that, Jaden. That certainly was a segment. Here are our Athletes of the Week for this week. Our Female Athlete of the Week is Carly Johnson. Carly plays for both the JV and varsity basketball teams. Coach set, says that she gives 100% effort and out-hustles everyone she competes against. Congratulations, Carly. Our Male Athlete of the Week is Austin Emerson. Austin was nominated by Coach Potenza and shares that Austin is one of the smartest players on the ice, and he plays like he's 6'7", 220. He plays the body, blocks shots, and controls the ice. Great job, Austin. And that's going to do it for us, Kingswood. Thank you for joining us on this very short staff night watch, and we will see you next week.